Bringing our Awula Sela coordinator um, of the Eco Conscious Citizens and co founder as well, joining us via Zoom. She's equally a lawyer, so understands a lot of the uh, marks that's been raised by Fadata there. But uh, Awula, it's uh, such a great time to be talking to you. The issue about the fixation on Aisha Huan is that of concern to you, particularly uh, knowing that we may be losing sight of uh, other illicit activities going on in the mining sector. And kindly unmute for me so I can get the point you're making. I will. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Without any doubt, we should not fixate on any individual. We should be fixated on the war against illegal uh, mining. And even the legal mining, we should be fixated on cleaning our environment, protecting our environment. So for me, the important thing is, what are we doing about the fight against uh, Galamse? And let me say that Galamse, we don't need um, heavy equipment like excavators. So if um, this lady is before the court, um, let's see what the results will be, because it's the court which will come to the decision. The police have investigated, she has been charged. I accept that there are minor charges and then um, the prosecution are prosecuting. Let's find out what decision the court comes to. So that is what is important, but we should not be fixated on her because it could be like a red herring. If we're so fixated on her that we don't look at what is actually going on, our rivers are still being poisoned. Our trees are still being felled willy-nilly and we need to focus on it, focus on how to stop, how to stop the environmental vandalism that is uh, currently taking place. So I don't think we should just fixate on one individual. We should look at the problem in its totality. Uh, the belief is once we're able to crack down on the likes of Aisha, Aisha Huang, and, and this is uh, without prejudice to the process is happening in, in, in the court, it will instill some level of fear, if I could use that, that word, in the system in terms of cracking down on illegal mining. Well, we've made her into a king king. I don't know whether she is or she isn't. All I know is that she's somebody who was being prosecuted and we were told wrongly that she had been deported. We don't know, but she had actually been repatriated. We don't know how she re-entered the country. Is she doing so legally, illegally? It's for the immigration officers to tell us how she re-entered the country. Be that as it may, I don't know that she's a king king, but I do know as a fact that, um, or shall I say that uh, it is alleged that highly placed individuals are engaging in the activities that are leading to degradation. And we need to get to the bottom of it. Uh, not long ago, uh, the president of the Small Scale Mining Association said that he saw stickers, sorry, vehicles with specific stickers on them in the forest uh, reserve uh, um, doing damage. He was arrested instead of asking him to produce further and better particulars. But he's been released. So the important thing is that let's get to the root of the matter. Excavators are not like needles. They can't just disappear, then appear in um, forest reserves when we have police checks and so on and so forth. So for me, it could be just focusing on one person who may or may not be seriously involved, but there are other people from Ghanaians and foreigners who are destroying our environment and we need to deal with them it doesn't matter how highly placed they are mm. and which political party they belong to in fact there are emerging concerns about the prosecution currently uh, underway uh, the fact that the charge are being leveled against um, Aisha Huan has got to do with mining without the requisite permit and many lawyers are arguing that uh, this is going to be a leeway for the defense counsel. Of course, you're a lawyer, so you understand all of these issues. How, how does it come to you in terms of your own assessment of the prosecution in this case? Well, at, at the end of the day, she's been, she's been charged with certain offenses. I would have thought that one would look at the crimes that she's alleged to have committed and then find out what to charge her with. So a thorough investigation should have taken place and then charges leveled against her. Be that as it may, if these were the only charges that we could find, I'm not sure that um, they carry any um, serious prison term. They could be just fines. So if Ghanaians are expecting an example to be made out of her, not with the charges that have so far been leveled against her, then the court does not operate in a vacuum. The court has to go according to law because we are a law-abiding uh, country. Therefore, if there are minor um, offenses, 
if she's found guilty, the most the court could do is to give her the maximum. But they cannot invent um, a, term, a sentence that is not applicable to that specific offense. So that's why I'm saying that Ghanaians should not have too many expectations. What Ghanaians' expectations should be that are we seriously interested in clamping down on illegal mining, whether it's by um, Aisha or any other person? And what steps are we taking? Because I've said that I'm not impressed with what is going on. Every day there are new images of um, forest reserves being um, destroyed, and we all appear to be just sitting idly by whilst it's happening. I'm sure that if we are seriously interested in getting rid of the illegal mining, we can do so. We can do so. It's not just by focusing on one individual. Mm. And in fact, uh, I would like to get your thoughts on this new trend, which is emerging, which has got to do with the whole politicization of the fight against illegal mining. In fact, uh, we're beginning to hear from the largest opposition party, the NDC, on this matter. I will bring that uh, shortly and then get your thoughts on it. But even before we get there, I want to have your take on how difficult or otherwise it has been um, or it will be trying to prosecute persons who are engaged in illegal mining. Do you, do you really need to get them in the act? Is that how difficult this kind of prosecution is? Well, it's a question of catching the people who are doing it and then the police investigating, looking at the proper charges to level against them and then to have a good prosecution. I mean, but at the end of the day, if we, we, there's no seriousness, then nothing is going to happen. I know Joy um, did an investigation a while back, if I'm correct. Mm. They went into a forest reserve and they, they came across some illegal miners and all sorts of things happened. But it seems to me that um, some of the illegal miners are those backing our main party. So I'm not quite sure that the political will is actually there. Yes. There was a lot of um, hulu baloo about burning excavators. They've been disappearing excavators. I think that if there's a little bit of seriousness, we will make some headway. Mm. I, I, will, I, I want you to listen to this for me because there's a new twist to the never-ending uh, Galanse campaign, Aisha Huang, uh, and, and her saga. Of course, uh, the Deputy General Secretary of the Opposition National Democratic Congress has been commenting on the matter, uh, indicating and now alleging that Asha Huang appears to be a financier of the governing New Patriotic Party. According to this Deputy General Secretary, Dr. Peter Otokno, the inability of the New Patriotic Party government to take on Asha Huang is simply because of how she supported the party over the years. Uh, let's let's uh, listen to the perspective of the NDC on this, and I'll take your thoughts shortly. Indeed, look at the crisis we are going through. We are suffering one of the worst currency challenges in the history of this country. Gold has the solution to this problem. They are not paying taxes on the Galamse. She is smuggling the gold. She is doing all manner of things against our law. And because MPP is in government and maybe they claim she is their financier, they are defending her. And they want all of us to follow suit. I mean, all of us that cannot be fools in this country. If perhaps they have been deceived by Ashawan because she has given them some pretenses, or because uh, Baumia went cap in hand begging them for money and she, she led them to go and raise funds for their campaign, that doesn't mean that we, the citizens of this country, must sit down and allow them to rip the nation off. Do you have any basis of this allegation that Aisha Wan is a financier of the NDP? Oh, well, I mean, if she's not a financier of the NPP, I wonder how the pre somebody who is supposed to have been deported and the president admitting that he has been deported, the, the, the senior minister, um, if you want, the prime minister, Osafu Mafu, saying that she has been deported. All of a sudden, the president is playing dumb and saying that he doesn't know that the woman has been deported. And I think it's becoming one too many, and it is becoming a worrying trend. You have a certain president who always says that he's not aware of decisions that he himself has undertaken. The president has issued executive instrument, and he says he is not aware. He has written letters of authority, and he says he's not aware. Corruption appears under him. Everybody is talking about it. He says he's not aware. Today, Aishawan, he's saying that he's not aware that Aishawan was deported. Very soon, he will say that he's not aware he's the president of this country. And, and I think that we should be worried. We should be concerned. Meanwhile, the party says the government must ensure Aisha Wang is brought to book. And it is most bizarre and most regrettable 
particularly because if you consider the kind of economic circumstances that we are going through and the fact that the gold of this country, the God-given gold of this country could be saving the economy and you have somebody who has ripped this nation so much and is still ripping this nation, who has committed crime against the nation, committed crime against our laws and the MPP came to tell us that that person has been deported even against the wishes of the people of this country. We said that the person has committed crime against our laws. Let's deal with that person. You don't deport the person because the person is not, is not a diplomat. If any diplomat comes here and mess up, because the person is a diplomat, maybe there are some bilateral you know, uh, arrangements that requires you to deport the person. But this is not a diplomat. This is a private Chinese citizen who has entered our country and has messed up, gone against the law, perpetrated crime, heinous crimes, stolen our gold. You understand? And so, for such instance, you shouldn't have even deported the person in the first place. But granted, be that as it may, you have, you have deported the person. The person has resurfaced in the country. Now, it's two things, two questions that must be answered. I say one, how did she enter the country? Did she go through immigration? Did she go through the borders? And if she didn't go through the borders, if she smuggled herself through maybe Togo or Ivory Coast, how come she was able to acquire a Ghana card? How come she was able to go through the NIA to get a Ghana card? That is another criminality on its own. But what we are demanding now, after finding out that Aisha Wan is still in the country, is the proper application of the laws of this country in dealing with her. She must be prosecuted and face the full rigors of the law. I have heard commentary from MPP operatives and, and uh, the lawyers defending her that she has, uh, this one is no matter and we are just blowing it out of proportion. Who is blowing what out of proportion? Uh, in fact, uh, there's more from Dr. Otokono. I will take that shortly, but uh, well, let me bring you in. Uh, two critical issues. First of all, uh, her citizenship has been called into question. In fact, uh, up until yesterday, uh, we never knew that she was married to a Ghanaian. So uh, perhaps that would change her status, right? Well, you see, so many allegations, so many things are being said. Who knows what is actually happening? So for me, the important things thing to do is to properly investigate. I cannot speculate. I really do not know. So I can't speculate. But what I can say is that what is happening to our environment is too serious for us to be playing or to be politicizing it. If we are actually interested in protecting our environment, then we should have a national, um, not debate upon this debate, but we should have a national team We've made up of people from different parties to get to the heart of the matter, to solve the problem. The two political parties um, politicizing the matter is completely unhelpful. Galamse has been going on under both political parties. And uh, there are rumors, and I should not be repeating rumors, but there are rumors that both are supported by uh, some of the illegal miners. So let's actually find out what is going on and let's not speculate it is a point yes we're told she was deported when in actual fact they think she wasn't how did she get back into the country did she commit any crime because let's let's face it anybody is innocent until proven guilty until she has been proven guilty the law demands that we take it that she's innocent i'm not sure what she has done what she hasn't done but i'm very concerned about making her the what shall I say, the beat and end all of Galamse or illegal mining in this country. Long before Aisha Wan came in, there was illegal mining going on. We should get to the heart of it. There are other big players. We all know the other big players. Deal with everybody equally. So yes, deal with her, find out the offenses she has been committed, she has allegedly committed, which can only be found out by a thorough investigation, prosecute her, and let her face the full rigors of the law. But that doesn't mean that all our attention should be on her. And we forget that as I speak, as we are having this discussion, illegal mining is still going on and environmental vandalism is taking place as we speak. Let's not be diverted. Let there not be a red herring. In 2018, the Inter-Ministerial Committee uh, was still effective. That goes to suggest that they put out a document, a recommendations, a set of recommendations that is still on the table of um, the, the president. A number of issues came up at the time. Uh, we do know that for 27 months, small scale mining was banned in this country. And we're supposed to follow that roadmap before we go ahead to release the small scale mining space. 
Uh, having gone through that document and, of course, um, what we've heard from officials at the time as to how this roadmap was going to be implemented, are you fully satisfied with what has happened over the years and as to whether or not we're going ahead um, as planned? You see, the only satisfaction will be when we see our waters beginning to turn their correct color. Brown waters, muddy waters, being told that we may have to import water. Who can be satisfied with this? Small scale mining is small scale mining. You're not supposed to be using excavators for small scale mining. This whole community mining, they are Ghanaians who had uh, reservations about it and were not listened to. So what is going on right now? I think the facts speak for themselves. I mean, there is not much to be proud of because it's not a question of discussions upon discussions, it's about action being taken. And what action is being taken should be sustained. It shouldn't be one day we burn excavators and then the next day the legal mining is still going on. So no, I'm not satisfied. And I do think that as the mat it's a matter of national emergency. So we should stop playing political whatever with it and actually come with solutions whether the army is to be involved whatever we can do mm. to stop this havoc from going and that's on. why i mean but i think it's totally I, yeah i'm that's sorry why, that's why i'm interested in the way forward uh, what should we be considering at this point a total moratorium on on illegal mining or i mean small scale mining if i should put it that way or i think should, 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 mining, we, we can, should we, we deploy can more, more troops right we can pause it for now. We can pause it for now. Right now, the focus should be on our waters turning to their original color. I mean, I'm not an expert, and I'm sure there are people better than me who can actually articulate what should be done. But yes, it might be a, a good idea to pause it. And then we should have a national um, um, meeting, a national discussion, with a view to finding solutions so that the solutions will be the same whoever wins the elections. So that it won't be a, a, a point of when you are trying to run for elections, you tell the illegal miners that when you come, uh, you are not going to uh, pursue them or I don't know what kind of statements were actually made. It should be something that we all put Ghana first. Because frankly, I don't think Ghana is being put first. My party is Ghana. I don't belong to any other political party but, but Ghana. And I would like to encourage the political parties to put Ghana first and to find the solutions. Yes, I think a way forward might be to have a pause for now. Find out, have a, we know where our forest reserves are. We need to find out which excavators are there and why we should even contemplate allowing mining in forest reserves. And that's why I always say, leave Atiwa Forest alone. There is no point in going to mine bauxite there because we know we can't control anything. And we know that, the, that Atiwa Forest is a globally significant forest reserve let's leave it as it is and coming back to the subject we're discussing the illegal mining yes we can have a pause on so-called community mining which is not actually community mining in all of this where do we place the economic importance of mining to, to our country mining is important we have uh, um, our natural resources but what we need to ask ourselves is that all the mining that has been going on in the country who is actually benefiting when we go to the mining areas, have we looked at the standard of living of the ordinary people there? Have they in any way benefited from it? So maybe we need to relook at what is going on. And again, I've said mining is important so long as it's done properly. Let me be absolutely clear. The fact that people have mining licenses doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going on as it should, as it should and the environment is not being damaged. So let's take a pause and look at what is actually going on. And let's leave um, the, the minerals in the earth when we are not quite sure of the damage they will do. And coming back to Atiwa, when we have been told that it will pollute the source of water to 5 million Ghanaians, leave the bauxite where it is. Maybe some time will come when we'll find technology which will enable us to mine bauxite without destroying the environment. Until then, leave it there. There is a green economy. And uh, I can assure you that a lot of money can be generated from the green economy. And that will not destroy the environment and it will be more beneficial to everybody, not just to the few people who are benefiting from mining in this country at the expense, at the expense of the nation. Already, the Ghana Water Company is indicating to us that they may have to shut down some of their operating plants. So, so it, 
the effects are really te telling on us. It's, and, it's uh, a dire situation. And it, instead of playing politics and looking at whether NDC did better than, than MPP, we should look at the fact that are we all right? Are we all right? We might soon not have drinking water. So let's pause with this mining since we are unable to ensure that there's responsible mining. And then when we have put our systems in place and we can properly monitor, we can properly monitor, the Environmental Protection Agency can actually be monitoring and telling us what is going on. Then maybe we can continue. In the meantime, what is going on? A lot of smuggling, destruction of our environment, and what is the benefit to Ghanaians? Anyway, uh, well, we'll still uh, be watching this space, but uh, if there's anything we're to expect from the sector ministry, uh, what should that be in the coming days for you as we wrap up on this conversation? Well, the only thing I'm expecting is something positive about which will be sustainable, about how we're going to deal with this situation, because we cannot go on as it is. It, it's, a, it's an emergency. It's a clear and present danger, what is going on right now. And the relevant authorities who are there, they have a mandate to do the right thing, should do it. Enough talk, enough conversation. We don't want it to be a conversation just going round and round. We want proper action to be taken to put an end, to put an end to the destruction of an, our environment. I will have, will have to leave it here. Thank you for your time here on The Pulse. In fact, well, since the uh, re-emergence of Aisha Huang, uh, th there have been reports that she had allegedly engaged in the Galamsi menace, even under the previous National Democratic Congress uh, government, but Dr. Otokono, who happens to be Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, describes this as shameful, an attempt to robbing the NDC into all of these scandals.